Welcome back to Goldmark TV. We have another short artist profile for you today. Uh, I'm going to be looking at some beautiful illustrations that span the life of the great French post-impressionist painter Pierre Bonnard. I hope you enjoy. A few years ago there was a major exhibition of work by Pierre Bonnard that came to the Tate Gallery. I think it then went on tour around Europe, uh, maybe even across the world. And this was one of a number of major exhibitions over the years that have really established Bonnard's reputation as a master of colour. He was one of the great post-impressionist French painters who really brought a, a completely different sensibility of colour, a, a use of uh, lilacs and yellows and pinks and greens uh, in a very sort of uh, wonderful post-Fauvist uh, style that really made people rethink colour, made people rethink the light uh, of, uh, of southern France uh, and of Paris itself where uh, Bonnard uh, lived for a, for a number of years. He was a wonderfully distracted painter. Uh, he hated painting uh, from life or, or out in the, in the open. Uh, he found that the changing light, uh, the, the changing tones of shadows across his, uh, his subjects, the changing colour as the sun set or, or rose, he found that far too much of a distraction. It, it stopped him from getting to the essence of the subject, the sort of heart of the painting he was trying to make. So instead he developed a, a way of working which involved sketching, making numerous drawings, and then painting from memory and his preparatory studies in a studio. Even then, he couldn't escape his own natural distractions. He would muddle about with the paint on the canvas for, for months and months, uh, not satisfied that he had finished a painting for, for, for weeks on end. There's a lovely story, actually, of a, a fellow artist, or a, a guest, coming to his studio and admiring a canvas uh, that, that Bonnard had in front of him and saying, uh, when will you finish it? Bonnard, standing there, daubing his paintbrush on the canvas, said, well, I think I might have finished it this morning. He couldn't leave things well alone. But in the world of drawing, in the world of printmaking, that distraction of colour, colour uh, as sensation, the, the colour that really defines uh, his, his career, with that gone, he could focus on the, the dual tones, the monochrome tones of black and white. And it's really in drawing that we get to see uh, the, the sort of instantaneous Bonnard, the spontaneous Bonnard really emerging. He kept his wonderful graphic style, his drawing style in his prints. And that's what we're going to be looking at today, some of these wonderful illustrations. It's worth remembering, actually, before we get into them, that Bonnard, for all his, uh, his reputation as a colorist, actually started life as a printmaker, started life as a, as a graphic designer, a designer of posters. It was really his, his early sort of Art Nouveau, Belle Epoque posters that uh, caught fellow artists, fellow critics' eyes, and really singled him out as an artist to watch. And printmaking, illustration, design and drawing remained fundamental to his career. He, he did them throughout the whole of his life. We'll be seeing some prints that were made in the very last years of his life. But first, I have in front of me uh, a wonderful set of etchings uh, of this series called Dingo. These illustrations for uh, the book of that, that title uh, by the writer Octave Mirbeau. Bonnard worked with uh, Amboise Vollard. Uh, who was a very famous publisher responsible for launching the careers of people like Marc Chagall, um, published books by uh, Picasso, by Matisse. Vollard worked with Bonnard throughout his life, made a number of books uh, in his sort of, um, his, the first half of his career. And Dingo was one of those. It was published in 1924. You might be able to see the, the date just down here. Dingo is a wonderful book, a wonderfully irreverent book that follows the life of its titular dog, Dingo, who is a, a dog that is a sort of wild and free spirit. He doesn't uh, play by the rules of bourgeois society or the bureaucrats around town. He's a, um, a, a loose cannon. And really the story follows uh, this, uh, the, the main character uh, and this dog uh, as he sort of reveals to the main character the sort of the wonderful 
uh, freedom, uh, the escape from the sort of staid traditions of town and, and country folk. You can see this beautiful irreverent picture here of the, of the dog uh, relaxing here. It was a, a, a book that sort of really redefined the, the limits of fiction. It really stretched the limits of fiction. And it was also one that had a kind of autobiographical feel to it. Octave Mirbeau, the man who wrote it, was a bit of a, a wild dog himself who, who lived life to the full. He actually knew Bonnard um, uh, early on and really admired his drawing style, this, this sort of wonderful, loose and spontaneous, scratchy style. But actually, he died in 1917, so we never got to see these illustrations uh, come to fruition. They've got, I think, uh, in these etchings, a wonderful scratchiness. It's a sort of inviting, hairy warmth, much like the sort of fur of a dog that you can see Bonnard's been trying to get in all of these images. Uh, this wonderful sort of um, loose, itchy scratchiness, uh, which gives them this, this sense of sort of wit and warmth. And it really captures the essence of the story, the sort of idiosyncratic main character, this wonderful dog that goes on, uh, this sort of very puppyish dog that goes on murderous sprees that sort of sends up the, 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 the very sort of conservative town folk around him. What these also show is that Bonnard, in all of his prints, whether it was etching or lithography, managed to keep that very quick an instant style, that, that sort of spontaneous style in his drawing, which was so useful for, for his paintings, for getting those initial ideas down, which he would then paint up. He could capture those on the etching plate or the lithographic block, uh, and there's that sort of wonderful freedom, that spontaneity is maintained in these etchings. Here you can see Dingo, I think, attacking uh, another dog here, and these citizens are uh, not too happy about it. I also love how the wildness in this, in this series, this inner bestial quality that, that, that Dingo sort of represents, uh, is brought out in the images too. Um, I love this picture of an accusé uh, in court in the docks and his, his, sort of, uh, his chops sort of loosen down. He actually looks like a dog, a wonderful sort of image, uh, just like a sort of guilty mutt that's been found eating some pork or something. Uh, caught red-handed. There's this wonderful sense of how uh, the people in this suite almost become dog-like themselves. These are some of my, my favourite images that Bonnard made uh, in print, um, and they really capture his sense of, of graphic style, his, his looseness, his ability to, to sort of overwork areas and remain quite sparse at the same time that would be so important to his, his painting. The second series I'd like to look at here is um, uh, After the Life of Saint Monique. This is published in 1930 and this was actually uh, authored by Volard himself. It was conceived as a sort of dialogue, almost like a play. And it follows the life of, of Saint Monique, who was the, the mother of Saint Augustine, whose life, Augustine, her sort of piousness, her dedication to her son, he documented in his confessions. This was a series that saw Bonnard trying out a number of different mediums, so I think there are uh, lithographs and etchings here in this series, and I think there might even have been some wood engravings too. Whereas in etching, because you are moving uh, a needle through a wax ground, uh, that slight bit of resistance, the, the difference of a, of a needle uh, from a sort of a pencil or a pen, or, or even a, a crayon on, on, on paper, it gives the quality of the line a, a sort of a, a, a difference. It's, it's not quite as, um, as, as quick and as fluid as drawing with a pencil might be. In lithography, you can get that because you're essentially using a, a greasy crayon. It's just like using a pencil on a, on a block. So it's really in lithogra lithography that you get to see as near a facsimile as you could possibly hope for of a Bonnard drawing. And these are wonderful. What I think they show in this 
quite touching, quite intimate series of scenes documenting the life of, of Saint Monique is how much Bonnard, as, an, as a post-impressionist, as a, as a painter heavily influenced by the impressionists of the late 19th century, how often he's looking at light, um, the changing light in a scene and, and capturing that somehow, even when he's only got the, the sort of the monochrome black ink on white paper. You can see in both the etchings and in the lithographs some of that impressionist brushwork, that handiwork as well. Lots of these lines are sort of feathered, they blur into others. There's a sort of an idea of, of, of the sort of um, the image almost shimmering in front of you. It's been built up from many scratched and, sc and quickly drawn lines. And it gives, even in these scenes where you've only got a, sometimes a simple outline, a wonderful feeling of the, of the light, of the mood in this scene. Bonnard once said that drawing is sensation and colour is reasoning. Really what drawing offered him as a, as a painter, first and foremost, was a way of capturing that moment quickly, of, of understanding it, and then the bringing colour to it, of painting it up, of making it into a sort of, almost a final image. The colour brought a kind of um, a slow understanding, a slow gestation to the images. What he could capture in drawing was that first quick impression that was so important. In illustration, in printmaking, what he had was the opportunity to put those fleeting moments and give them a kind of permanence, the kind of same kind of permanence that he would have been looking for in his paintings. But what these prints also allowed him to do was to expand and to experiment, to take that natural distraction that he had, that, that constant temptation to see where things explore, that kind of uh, flaneur quality to him of, of wandering and exploring and experimenting. Illustration gave him the scope for that, making not just five or ten, but sometimes 30, 40, 50 images for a, for a single, uh, uh, illust single illustrative work, a single suite. Printmaking gave him the chance to, to sort of fritter away his time and work through these different images. And that's especially evident in this St. Monique uh, suite. Um, these sort of very quick, brief moments that just capture these little, these little intimacies, these little moments of, of tension and, and harmony uh, within the work on the page. <laughs> These last lithographs that I've got in front of me are from a suite called Crepuscule des Nymphes, or the, the sort of the nighttime uh, uh, playtime of the nymphs. This was made in 1946. It was actually four years in the making. It's one of the very last series of prints that Bonnard made. He was 79 at the time, living in Le Canet, a southern commune in France. And really, at this point, he had nothing left to prove. He would make his designs for this, this series, which were then worked up onto the block by Jacques Vion, who was a very skilled printmaker. Uh, Bonnard was really, by this point, too old, too infirm, too frail to do the, um, the, the full printmaking himself. And what they capture is a wonderful kind of return to a lot of the imagery from his very earliest illustrations. He made a, um, a, a series of images uh, for uh, the story of uh, Daphne and Chloe, and this brought him again to that classical imagery of nymphs uh, being uh, chased by Olympian guards, these sort of sylvan woodlands, this very pastoral sort of uh, series of imagery, quite like the, the poetry of, uh, of someone like Ovid, maybe. And you can see in these images, this is one of Leda and the Swan, a very famous Greek myth, there's a kind of whispery quality to them. For Daphne and Chloe, at the very start of his career, he had made, uh, he'd 
taken a, a large number of home photographs for reference. In fact, Bonnard was one of the major artists to, to take up the camera quite early in his career as a useful tool. Other artists like uh, Degas, uh, in particular, uh, made a number of uh, use of a number of, um, of home photographs. He and his wife Marta would uh, go out into the garden. They would strip naked and they would sit around in the ponds or cavort in the in the garden, lying out in the midday sun. And um, these photographs would sort of provide um, a, a wonderful reference point for for the light, the quality of the light, that sort of dappled light that comes through the foliage, that fuzzy quality to early photographs of the, the early 20th century. It's that same quality that you can sort of feel in these lithographs, even though this is from the very last years of his, of his career, um, as an old man sort of returning to that sort of wonderful, free, naked youth um, that he had once enjoyed. They've got that quality, I think, in them, of these sort of last images, There's, they're even sparser than, than some of the others, even looser, almost like a sort of a memory, the impression of a memory on the page fading before you. I think they confirm, along with the other prints that we've seen, that although Bonnard is going to go down in history as a colourist, that he's going to be continually remembered as a master of, of, of colour in his paintings, that it was that domestic quality, that, that intimate quality in his paintings that he captured in his printmaking and his illustrations, and that underpinning all of that work in beautiful, glorious colour was a real powerful sense of, of the drawn line, a wonderful quality for, uh, for the, the gestures of, of pencil, of crayon, of the etching needle on the plate. It's as a draftsman that he was able to be the painter and the colourist that we know him today. And it's as a draftsman that we can see him celebrated in these prints here. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some of these, these images, uh, maybe uh, an insight into Bonnard's life that you've not come across before. Um, all the prints that we've seen here are available here at the gallery. If they're not online, they're here in our wonderful big plan chest that you can see here. I've, there's a series here, we've got some beautiful Dobson sculptures up here on, on top of them. There's so much work here that isn't able to get on our website yet, so if you've seen anything you like the look of, do please get in touch and uh, I'm sure one of our uh, team can help you out. I look forward to seeing you again soon uh, and bringing you some more uh, beautiful work from these undiscovered plan chests. <laughs>